So at uh, 620, um, I'm calling this meeting to order the Board of Education. Um, we, um, it's a convoluted process getting here tonight. Um, we started with uh, an open um, session uh, board retreat. Um, at about um, five minutes to six, we went to executive session to discuss a personnel matter. And uh, we're back here um, calling this meeting to order. This is our uh, study session for the month of August. Um, Please join me in um, reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, our God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, so, could I have a motion to adopt the agenda? Todd, second. Christina? Questions, comments? All those in favor? The uh, agenda is adopted. Jim, you look like you're. Oh, I, I thought uh, we we're gonna we need to modify a singular item within here as that's being presented okay. on a personnel Sorry matter. For my issue. Yeah. No. Yep. Um, so study sessions are designed for the purpose of uh, having administrative updates to the Board of Education. No public comments at these sessions. Residents may attend the next uh, scheduled uh, business meeting on September 15th and or contact the board via email at, Shenet, uh, at boe at shenet.org with any comments or questions. All questions come into the superintendent's office are shared with the board. Policy questions are typically answered by the board president. Operational questions or concerns are typically, typically addressed by the superintendent. I'll move right to superintendent's comments. Um, sure, I have four, four items I just want to bring to the board's attention. Um, one, there's a lot of conversation. There'll be more conversation this week in the news about um, scores, teacher scores, principal scores, um, just so the board will know we're scheduled for the September meeting. At that point, Dr. Wood will provide an, not only an overview of the new APPR laws, but also the, the results from our, our recent scores um, for teacher and principals as, as an overview as well. So, so in case you're, you're just wondering where we are with that, that will, that will occur um, at the September meeting. Um, two, Mrs. Whitmore has been working with, um, with many others, including the BOCES, to try to create an online option for tax payment. Um, and we know that not everyone will take advantage of it. However, in this day and age where most people either use credit cards to buy everything from gas to groceries, um, it's not necessarily out of the question that people also use credit cards to uh, make tax payments. So that will be effective for this year. In fact, um, when the tax bills go out in a couple weeks from now, um, there will be a flyer included in that that talks about two additional options beyond in-person payment or at the bank payment, um, um, but also a credit card and something they call an e-check payment option. So those online options will be available to for the convenience of those people who are willing to to be assessed with additional fees to do so. So the the, the taxpayer will pay the fee. Yes, the yes, that's card, correct. That's okay. correct. That's correct. And and it's clearly stated on there. So there's no assumption that this is something benefiting the school district. Um, Two other pieces, dates, um, Superintendent's Conference Day. This year will be prior to Labor Day, September 3rd. I'll be sending out um, an agenda. Dr. Wood has been organizing that. We'll send out an agenda again of that day. Certainly invite um, board members to be in attendance that morning session for Superintendent's Conference Day. So we're excited about that. And we're particularly excited. We're just coming off new teacher orientation where I think we all have almost, almost 60 new teachers. Um, I think, what, 56 and counting maybe? We're probably up to 60 right now. So, so we have a lot of new faces um, in the crowd. So we're looking forward to welcoming a crop of new teachers to, to the school district at Superintendent's Conference Day, as well as saying um, welcome back to those of those who have been with us before. So September 3rd at Thursday is Superintendent's Conference Day, but I'll send more information on that. Related, um, October 8th is our first um, day of school for kids. And that's that Tuesday. I mean, September, September 8th. 8th. <laughs> September 8th, yeah. I'm glad to write that down. <laughs> September 8th. Yes. September 8th Kids is that, that. that, so I want to emphasize that Tuesday because in the past has been that day Tuesday. following. So, so the 8th, um, and we will do our visit tour, and I'll send out a note probably next Friday bulletin, outline some time frames of when we'll meet what. It's probably going to be very similar to for past years, for past board members who went on it. And I'll try to outline so in case you can't come right at the beginning, you could always try to catch us at different points when we visit different buildings. Um, myself, Dr. Wood, will be joining board members who, 
who want to visit. And it's a great opportunity for the board to, one, say hello mm -hmm. and welcome back to folks, but also for the board to see how things unfold um, at the start of the school year. And I think it's a great opportunity to do so. And the last piece, um, and, and it's a good news piece, literally came in the mail today. Um, as I was leaving the office, I happened to look in the mail bin, and I noticed it was a letter from the um, State Education Department, specific Iowa Schwartz. And I'll just read this, this brief list statement. On behalf of Commissioner Ilya and the Board of Regents, I write to congratulate you and your district having schools that have been designated as reward schools. These schools are among those in New York State that have made the most progress or have the highest performance with no significant gaps in student achievement. And so they sent um, certificates, very nice certificates, and, and it's, I, I will frame these and deliver them to the respective building principals um, as we move forward. Um, we have Scano Elementary, Octay Elementary, um, Tosago Elementary, and Tosago, is, as you know, this year was the highest ranking elementary school in the capital region. Um, Caragon Elementary, um, Chango Elementary, and we have Acadia Middle School, and Acadia was the top ranking middle school in the region this year, and Gowana Middle School. And we certainly applaud all, all these respective school communities. And also like to, to recognize that while we have three of our elementary school and one of our middle school that were not um, recipients of the certificate, I want to applaud the efforts of those folks as well because we know that there are certain benchmarks that's used to trigger this, but we know that all those schools are making significant progress. And, and, and so we certainly don't want it to become one of those have versus have not, so competitive nature. But when we get these kind of rewards, I think it's important for the public to hear because unfortunately, if there was something negative, the public will also hear. So we want to, to recognize um, um, good when, is, when good is, is proposed to us as a school district. So say kudos and congratulations to those principals and, and I'll be putting in one of our green district frames and delivering to those um, building principals, if not this week, um, certainly before the start of school, so to have those certificates to share with their respective staff. That um, is a great addition to, I looked this afternoon at our website and um, with the, within the comments that we have there, Kelly, uh, right on the front page, are the recognition that our schools have received over the last um, two to three months, significant amount of recognition of the effort uh, by each of the schools. So this just adds to that. Yeah, so a lot of good things happening. We're excited yeah, about absolutely. the start of school, um, excited to have kids return, excited with the, the new people coming on board. Um, and we have some changes. Um, coming about and certainly tonight the board will be asked to act on some of those changes um, and we'll be dealing with some of those transitions in the in the coming weeks as well. Okay. So that's all for me for, for communications. Okay. And Want we'll me to go into the study the, session, sure. Right sure. Into the um, financial report. As Mrs. Wetmore comes forward, um, just want to do one thing here. Um, so one of the things that, that not necessarily going into detail of this, but one of the things that, that the board will be seeing more often than not are what I'm going to call these storyboard type presentation, one or two pages that capture a lot of information in a summary way. Um, what, because, you know, we spend a lot of time putting together 10, 20, 30 page slide presentations. And when we get to page 20, we're referring to something back on page one you're not as interested anymore because it's there's a disconnect oftentimes for the for the viewing public and and so the board has and, and I sent to you in a separate some what, what we call working papers the details behind some of these things but for for this so we're we're planning to use this model more often than not that really just captures the essence of a lot of information but more important put everything in context so someone who wants to know what's the fiscal health of Shen this says it all this tells you what you need to know and certainly um, gives you enough information so it can point you in the direction if there's some need for specific questions. So, so we're going to try this tonight and then see if it's something that the board see as useful. Um, and if it is, this is a model we want to use to because I think it, 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 it lends to um, more engagement in conversation because you see everything on the screen and you can ask how things are related to each other versus trying to page back to slides mm -hmm. that, quite frankly, it doesn't make sense unless you see the last one. Um, so, so I just want to share this model. So you may see this more so than, than not um, as we move forward. So Kathy, you want to just walk through? Thank you. Uh, one word that we forgot to put on here was unaudited. Uh, our auditors are in currently. They're about halfway through. 
Um, so we don't think the numbers are going to be significantly different. In fact, they may be exactly the same, but I wanted to at least mention that. Um, we start out, as you can see, with the adopted budget 1415. Revenues equal expenses, so our budget is exactly the same on both. The year-end expenditures this year were $158.8 million. So this year we've expended 99.17% of the budget. I should also mention the expenditures um, in this scenario also includes carryover encumbrances at the end of the year. So really reflects how much money is left over, which there's a difference in the budget um, of $1.3 million. Um, as you know, we monitor and manage the budget the entire year. We do a mid-year uh, review of the budget. We look to make sure that our program needs are satisfied. And after that, we talk with our auditors, our financial advisors, um, and talk about how we can best leverage our opportunities. And I think we've previously discussed here that this year we look to pay down some of our debt a little bit early. Uh, this will provide some capacity going forward. Um, not only for capital projects, but bus borrowing, and um, provides us the opportunity to add more debt going forward without negatively impacting the tax levy going forward. Um, so we did that this, this year. We paid off in total between buses and capital about $5 million, um, and that is represented in the total numbers that you see here. On the revenue side, uh, revenue year end, we're at $161.3 million. We expended just over 100% of our budget this year. Received. Received, I'm sorry. Oh, oh, <laughs> expended, sorry, I'm in the expenditure mindset. Um, so we received a little over 100% of our budget. Um, there's about a $1.2 million difference there. Uh, part of this increase, if you will, in the revenues has to do with our carryover encumbrances from the prior year as well as a reappropriation. So about half of that is due to carryover encumbrances and reappropriation. The other half is excess revenue that's been received. And there's more specific state aid, some additional beyond what we Yes, have. additional state aid, we received about or $439,000 or so. So that was the biggest difference um, in increase that we saw there. And you can see the, the components of that, of what makes up the revenue and percentages. State aid is 25.73%. That's actually up from last year, so I'm happy to see state aid is starting to take on a bigger percentage of the whole. The tax levy obviously goes up every year, but as a percentage of the whole, it it's about the same as it was last year. Our appropriated fund balance, um, bless you, is 4.7 million. Uh, 2.75 of this is what we reappropriated last year. We had 600,000 in encumbrances, 750,000 was the retirement reserve, and 660 was the employee benefit reserve. Those pieces we reappropriated for uh, this year's budget. So between the two, um, we take our operational difference between the revenues and expenses, and that drives additional capacity, or not, as the case may be. But this year, obviously, we have some capacity because our revenues exceed our expenses. Well, Certainly. Make one point. Looking under one percent, we'll circle our other incorporates our federal money. It includes one percent. Some of yes. the federal. Only a portion. Yeah, only a portion. Yes. Some, yes. some of that yes. represents mm -hmm. our federal yes. money. Very good point. Yes. Idea money, Title One money, but, and they're wagging the dog. Well, to, to some degree, no. That's some of the title ones we keep separate. In a, in a, so that's just mm -hmm. a little separate. But some of the Medicaid reimbursement um, federal portions are yes. here. Um, so, so we, we, when we do the audit report, we'll show the title grants a little bit separately. So we'll do that separately. Yeah. Any? Great. Any other questions? Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you for providing the breakdown on the. Um, uh, the reserves, that's very helpful, because I know I, I asked mm -hmm. that question time and again. Um, in terms of how we realize the expenses and revenues, um, we're doing it on a cash or more of an accrual basis? Accrual basis. basis. Yeah. Okay. It's actually considered a modified accrual basis. Okay. So the state requires us to um, record on a modified accrual basis. So then when you list in what you gave us before that it's projected that's based on the accrual because it, it hasn't is. necessarily been received. Correct. Okay. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Any other questions? On, okay. uh, on balance capacity, sure. uh, is there, uh, I just want to get a better understanding of it, is there a limit to that? For yeah. state law. You want to talk about that? Yes. Yeah. So looking at the fund balance capacity, um, what actually goes towards our fund balance becomes the difference between revenues and expenses. So last year, we closed the year at 3.9% fund balance. That's percentage of the next year's budget. And the state cap is four. Correct. State cap is four. Um, this year, as you can see, we're still at about 6.2 million. It's about 3.84%. So we remain fairly stable, um, and we have from year to year pretty much throughout this scenario. Um, we made some projections for the next year listed here, um, made similar assumptions with the $2 million reappropriation going forward for that year. Um, we also assumed we, we earned 100% of revenue and 99% of expenses. Um, so that would project about a 3.54% and just sort of illustrates the fact that it becomes very tight moving forward um, as you um, budget more tightly and more closely um, as we're trying to do from year to year going forward. So question to, to you is what, what's the ideal percentage you want to have on a yearly basis? Would it be just under 4 or is it 3.5? Um, so this way, just under 4 is ideal. Um, and, and, and for us, this is a, a new, new, new territory. For for many, many, many years, our fund balance was under two percent. Um, and and particularly through those 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 tough um, state fiscal years. Um, and so so this gives us the fiscal stability to to really plan forward. And and I just mentioned a second ago the fact that we're welcoming new staff. That's a conversation that we weren't having three to five years ago. Um, and, and that's a conversation that we anticipate that we'll continue to have moving forward. And so so this this graphical depiction, again, if somebody wanna say, well, okay, you had a good year, but what does that mean? Well, for, for the foreseeable future, we see things pretty stable um, because as long as we have the capacity to make some fund balance contribution, it creates that buffer between the impact of taxpayers and the potential for us to do some program, either um, retention and or expansion. So, 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 so it's it's a it's a good thing if we can remain here in this in this three and a half um, to four range versus the contrary of one and a half mm -hmm. to two range. Because, um, as Kathy mentioned, we're going to budget tighter and tighter. We have some flexibility here. If we would have not transferred to, to leverage some opportunity to pay off some debts earlier, we probably would expend about 96% of our budget, which is typically how much we try to shoot for um, as we kind of project things out. But we saw that this was a year that we can actually do two things, pay off some future debt to minimize exposure, but yet have a very stable fund balance picture moving forward. And so, so we're leveraging two different opportunity points at the same time. So yeah. Yeah, and for, and for years, I, I forget how long it's been, but. Um, the old cap used to be 2%, yep. and it, it got changed, I don't know, yep. 15 years ago, yep. maybe something like that. So the 4%, I mean, somebody re recognized that this is an important thing, and it really does give us that flexibility to be level setting in terms of the, the numbers as we as we play out and make better projections, right, yep. in, in terms of what we can afford to do. I mean, you, you talked to us in the spring about um, you would be recommending adding these positions, if we were looking at a position and you'd planned out that we'd be back at the table talking about how many cuts we'd had to make yep. going forward. And, uh, and, and even thinking about it right now, one of the things that we haven't really got our head in, as into yet, um, the tax cap next yeah. year is going to be potentially below 1%. Yeah. And so, so you think about school districts that are functioning on the fringe right now those places are going to hemorrhage next year, period. Yeah. And it's, a, it's tragic because every time that happens, the quality of, of provisions decrease. That's the bottom line. When you're cutting, taking away something, something is going to suffer some point, either short-term, long-term, or otherwise. And so, so when we look at, at the budget, we're not necessarily thinking dollars and cents. We're talking about um, program quality. You know, Mr. Presser used the word, um, 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 results versus value. You see results here, but it's the results that reflect hopefully the things that we value as a school and community. And, and the results show that we can stabilize tax impact 
the board just approved last board meeting um, some tax levy numbers that's that from one year to next tax impact is fairly stabilized less than a, a percent less than negative percent when you look at the true value so from a taxpayer perspective people can realize that we don't have huge spikes in the in the tax impact is pretty flat line from a program perspective we preserve programs and look for some program expansion and next year this is going to come into play because you know without this kind of capacity if the tax cap falls below one we're going to say okay do we buffer for a year to preserve those things but if we didn't have the capacity we can even have that conversation our only conversation would be where we're going to cut for a year and then potentially see what the next year brings and that's where the politics has quite frankly eroded the ability for schools to really plan for it and so we're trying to do some things so we can effectively control our destinies by 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 fiscal planning and that's why i applaud the board for for years saying that we want to look at fund balance capacity and even the next piece that mrs wetmore is going to talk about in terms of having some established reserves that we want to make sure that we're not cutting reading for little johnny because we have to pay off tax search for 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 mr johnny um, and and so 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 we have to balance those things in terms of of the the health of the of the organization so this is more than just a fiscal report it's truly about the district organizational health and our ability to add value to the equation and ironic that we're kept at four percent which of course is better than two percent when millions of dollars can be retained by other governmental aid entities yeah. and where in the business sector they would not want to operate with less than five ten percent easily so, mm -hmm. yeah. and of course tax cap with us is it an override with other entities, all I need is a majority of their board rather than the tax payers. It's not a very easy thing to try to do. So you want to talk about reserves real quick? Yeah. Yes. So the reserves, we have four that we've talked about in the past. The retirement contribution reserve, uh, we're not talking about adding anything additional this year. As you recall, our retirement um, percentage drops this this next year so we didn't recommend increasing our reserve there because we think it still supports our liability the tax tertiary reserve similarly we're not while we're still seeing more coming in some are dropping off so we didn't see a need to increase the tax tertiary reserve this year either the workers comp reserve we actually get those numbers from our workers comp um, administrators this is the reserve that they recommended we maintain workers comp claims you know are just ongoing so it's reflective of the claims that we have in the employee benefits reserve um, we're showing a small increase there um, as you know we reappropriate a portion of this every year for the tax levy so we beef that up a little bit um, to, to tie a little bit more closely to our liability sure. any questions, questions. questions. Kathy, keep up doing the good work. This is great. This is the kind the of team thing. effort. I, I have know to it. Think. I, I know that, but <laughs> it's uh, you're the face on it, and it's just uh, it's really Im important. I mean, all the, all the things we we just uh, as you know, we sat in on a retreat. We're talking about what you know, what are the things we do that impact uh, student achievement, and this this could be this could appear removed. <laughs> it's not removed. It's the it's, it it comes down to what are the resources we have to meet the needs of our students. And, and we're providing it. And that's great. Thank so, you. So I hope this was good for the board. Yeah, very much. Um, yeah, it's very helpful. Because concise, put a context, and we're going to try to do more of this with different presentations. Um, so, you know. and I appreciate having the detail come too. So, what will the detail be? Something that's added to the minutes of the meeting? Now, this the the minutes of the meeting will reflect the fiscal capacity, and and because a lot of details are. You know, you're getting Kathy's spreadsheets and working papers and those things of that nature. So, so the detail will be pretty much that there's a financial overview provided and, and a PDF <coughs> version of the schematic. So at some point, you know, we have to see it as John Q picking up and saying, hey, where's the school district? You know, is this place in good place, in bad shape, good shape, or otherwise? I think this gives people a good sense of, of where we are as a school district. Yeah. Thank you, Kathy. Okay. But well, wait a minute, before you go away, we're gonna do a consent item, treasurer's yeah. report, yes. right? Anybody, uh, gonna have a motion to accept the treasurer's report, Todd, second, uh, Jim, any questions for Kathy? Okay, all those in favor? Thank you. Move on to action items, we have a, uh, 
couple uh, contracted services, uh, items uh, 4A and B, contract extension to access therapy, and uh, contracted services special ed to Lori Aurelia. Uh, can I have a motion to uh, um, accept both of those recommendations? Christina, second, Mary. Any questions or comments? All those in favor? Well, those two items are approved. Uh, item C, scholarship and local grant do donations. Can I have a motion on that? Mary, second, Jim. Um, any questions or comments? Gratitude. Good, good list, right? We like, we like this, with gratitude, right? Uh, all those in favor? Uh, then we have approval of the 2015-2016 district goals. Uh, could I have a motion on that? Bob, second, Jim. I don't look to my right. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was the appropriate person. <laughs> yes. Yes. Any questions or comments? Just with gratitude to our vice president for yeah, yeah, shepherding that process. Yes, thank you. Team process. Team process, yeah. yeah. Team Shen. All those in favor? Motion carries. Um, it's a bush. Jill's got staffing recommendations to us, and I think she also has an agenda on one additional item. Yes, good evening. Um, and you'll notice the agenda this time is on our new system, the WinCap system. So we're very excited about it and want to thank the board for their support. Um, we do have a few tweaks that we're working with the programmers on, uh, a lot of decimal points, but uh, it, is the, it is the new system, so thank you. With our appointments this evening, I'd like to recognize Erica Ledoux. She's in the audience. She is going to be uh, recommended as secondary English for your probationary appointment. Um, Erica has substituted for us. I believe she did her student teaching here as well. Um, so she's here this evening. Uh, we have several probationary and term appointments. And um, under our resignations, yes. we have um, two. We have certified staff, Jill Barker, who is on there as our academic administrator for special education. And um, a late addition, Mr. Ben Roberts, um, our elementary principal at Aranjan. We have some retirements. Um, classified staff, Deborah Luciano is cafeteria monitor. End of the day, um, eight, six, um, Linda Lyman, she's going to be retiring um, in November. Janice Marcone is also going to be retiring in November. And those are the retirements. And I noticed that uh, it doesn't have the years of service on the new agenda, so I will get that information What's for you. What's the effective date for Ben? Joe? Ben's effective date would be end of the day, August 31st. Could I have a motion to accept the uh, personnel report recommendations? Todd, second. Bob? Any other additional questions or comments? <coughs> Wishing our retirees all the best. I know yes. some of these have been great, dedicated employees of Shen for a while. So. Thank you. Huh? That was Bob and Jim. Yeah. Uh, Bob and Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just a comment. I w uh, for Mr. Roberts, I wanted to thank him for his exemplary service to both our district and our kids. Um, in my particular case, it's with reluctance that I vote to accept his resignation, but. Uh, I know he's uh, moving on to um, someplace else, and we wish him well. All those in favor? Motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you. Jeff. Next item is approval of the use of facilities and the fee schedule. Uh, Becky's here, but I don't. Are there any questions on that? Let's have a, uh, a motion first. I'm sorry. Motion. Mary, second. Gary, any questions, comments? All those in favor? Motion carries, and finally we have uh, contract emergency replacement, Caragon Arenda water heaters. We're in the water heater business these days, I think. Um, can I have a motion to accept that? Gary, second. Um, Todd? What's, what is the distinction between you know, an emergency and a normal thing as far as you know, a, the process of that we have to go through to get it. When we declared emergency, we bypassed the long, drawn-out process of getting SCD to approve some type of plan. <clears throat> and it is an emergency because we need to get this resolved before before the heating season kicks in. Yeah, um, yeah. So, absolutely. All those in favor? Motion carries. Let's see. Before we ask for a motion for adjournment, just uh, note that our next... Uh, uh, business meeting is Tuesday, September 15th at 7 p.m. And then um, two weeks later, we'll have a study session here, uh, both at uh, meeting starting at 7 o'clock. Could I have a motion for adjournment? Bob? Second. Christina? 
All those in favor? The meeting's adjourned. Thank you very much. Oh, wow, that was a short one. What do I do? He said